Number 9. Proboscis Monkey You might think that the proboscis monkey's ginormous, strangely shaped nose is unattractive, but the species' females certainly don't think so. In fact, their noses are an integral part of these monkeys' mating rituals. The way this works is that their noses block their mouths, acting as a sort of echo chamber that serves to louden their natural calls. When the ladies hear this, they swoon, and other monkeys in the species know that they've been beat. Before finding mates, however, these monkeys live among other bachelors, separate from the female population. Their noses are without a doubt their most striking feature, but the proboscis monkey has a few other notable features. For one thing, they're the best swimmers of all primates in the world. You can look up videos of them jumping into the water in awkward flops for yourself. Their hands and feet are webbed, which helps them to outswim crocodiles, one of their primary predators. Their tails are also nearly as long as their bodies. Number 8. Hummingbird Moth The hummingbird moth is so big that many people who see them flying around their gardens actually mistake them for hummingbirds. Have you ever seen a moth that big? Well, that's not the only similarity these gigantic moths share with hummingbirds. They also move in a very similar manner. This moth will fly in front of flowers and remain there by flapping their wings rapidly, so fast that they even sound out a low hum, just like hummingbirds. Through convergent evolution, hummingbird moths earned all of these similarities with hummingbirds. Its diet is also similar to that of the hummingbird. A lot of the time, hummingbirds eat flowers that have petals that are shaped like tubes. And wouldn't you know it, so does the hummingbird moth. There are a lot of hummingbird moths throughout the world. In total, there are four species of them in North America. You've probably actually seen one of them before in real life, but you might have just mistook it for the bird. Number 7. Pyrenean Desmond If you thought the platypus was weird, then the Pyrenean Desmond is sure to surprise even further. It looks a lot like a mix between a mole and a platypus. While the feet at the front are small, its back feet are large and webbed. They're also really tiny, and they tend to grow up to the size of a hamster on a good day. And a ton of that size is devoted to their huge noses. Their bodies are well adapted to the rivers and marshes where they live. They're excellent swimmers because of their feet, and their noses are great at sniffing out prey. We know that they're nocturnal, and that they eat tiny river invertebrates. But other than that, we don't know much else. Because of their size, they're really hard to find. And to add insult to injury, they're also mostly nocturnal, so you won't be able to just come upon one on an everyday hike. Interestingly, in ancient times, there was a ton of creatures like the Desmond, but as evolutionary time passed, their numbers dwindled. The Desmonds are the end of a long lineage of such creatures, and researchers are hoping that studying them will help us understand how such creatures thrived, and how we can best protect their descendants. And now for number 7, but first be sure to subscribe if you're new here and let me know your favourite animal in the comments below. Number 6, Leafy Sea Dragon If you don't look for too long, you might mistake the leafy sea dragon for a patch of sea flora, but you would be woefully mistaken. In fact, these creatures are far livelier than a bed of foliage, although their appearance does enable them to hide among all the coral reefs where they tend to reside. Since they look a lot like leaves, they can simply conceal themselves next to algae, and none of their predators have any idea. They likely developed this camouflage ability because they're not particularly adept at swimming. Thus, blending in was of paramount importance in surviving encounters with predators. They pretty much eat plankton alone, but they sometimes attack and eat small prey. Because they have such big heads and tiny mouths, they can suck in their prey effortlessly. You might think that the leafy sea dragon is a close cousin to the seahorse, but they're more akin to a pipefish than anything else. You can see some of these for yourself at many aquariums, but there are threatened species due to being randomly caught in fishing nets while looking for other fish. Divers also collect them for private aquariums, but they're a very delicate animal and often die in a fish tank. Given their strange appearance, they're sure to amaze when you see one up close. Have you ever seen one before? Let me know down below. Number 5. Panda Crocodile these crocodiles may look like a strange hybrid between pandas and crocs, but don't be fooled. 
it's not a separate species, but rather just a few crocodiles painted like pandas. This is all part of a strange craze where various kinds of animals are painted to look like pandas. This is because pandas are something of a rarity, so painting an animal to look like one helps bring more people to view them. I know, a bit random, right? Here's how this particular brand of panda lookalike came into being. When the panda Li Ping was born at the Chiang Mai Zoo, located around the north of Thailand, onlookers came in droves to see the new panda. However, most of the other exhibits were receiving dwindling views. Because of that, all the other exhibits were trying to outdo one another to get attendance back up to par, hence the painted crocodiles. At the Samut Prakan Crocodile Farm in Taiban, Thailand, officials there also painted crocodiles to attract people to their croc farm, which contains over 60,000 crocodiles. They were placed in the disabled crocodile section, which contains many strange kinds of crocs. This is all a PR stunt and a way to capitalize on the amount of buzz generated by a newborn panda. Man, humans can be random. Number 4. Softshell Turtle Softshell turtles do have shells, but if you felt them, you wouldn't think much of it. That's because their shells are smooth and leathery, more like an animal hide than a thick armour we expect of most turtles. Their shells don't have the kind of scales, called epidermal scutes, that sea turtles have for instance. But for all that, there are tons of softshell turtles in the world today. In fact, the spiny softshell turtle rivals all other species of turtles in terms of sheer population in North America. They're also known by their strangely long necks. These come in handy though. Many softshell turtles hang out in shallow waters and mud, and they can extend their long necks just above the surface of the water to keep breathing. Without their distinctive armor, how do these turtles make a living? Actually, they're hunters. Seemingly unfazed by their lack of protection, they seek out their prey and trap them. Finally, softshell turtles also have a distinctive flat shape. While this may seem odd at first glance, it actually helps them swim quite fast. Did you know there were turtles without hard shells? It's strange to think, but there are a lot of them out there. Number 3. Blobfish the aptly named Blobfish isn't going to win a beauty contest anytime soon. When scientists on the Norfans expedition in the northwestern waters of New England first discovered this fish in 2003, they named it Mr. Blobby. And for good reason. This fish was never meant to leave the deep sea where it lives. Above the water, its skin is so blobby because 4,000 feet below the sea, the pressure would make it look like just a regular fish. In contrast to other fish, blobfishes don't have air bladders that enable most fish to stay buoyant. It would get crushed in deep waters. For support, the blobfish relies on water itself, its body being less dense than the water around it. Because of these facts, the blobfish tend to remain stationary. So they just float along, waiting for smaller things to pass them by. When that happens, they open their mouths and inhale them in. Moving doesn't even help them catch their prey, so why bother? Sounds like a pretty easy life. It probably doesn't even care that everyone seems to think it's the ugliest fish in the world. You can even see Mr. Blobby for yourself at the Australian Museum Collection. Number 2. Star-Nosed Mole The star-nosed mole is well known and arguably infamous for the strange star-shaped organ on their snout. It might look like something out of a horror movie, but it actually serves as a vital tool for this mole. It's the most sensitive touching sensory organ of every animal on Earth. It contains over 100,000 nerve fibers. That's more than five times the amount in our hands. In an area even tinier than the tip of a finger. It's so touchy that we haven't even found the threshold beneath which these fibers light up. Like other moles, the star-nosed mole is pretty much blind. But weirdly enough, the spot at the center of their starry pendants, called the touch fovea, operates a lot like our visual system does, neurologically speaking. The center seems to focus on things in much the same way as our eyes. This would mean that natural selection can create analogous kinds of sensory organs, even when they're operating from different senses like smell and touch. 
The star-nosed mole spends its life underground and in the water, using its big claws to dig around looking for prey. When they swim underwater, they're even able to smell by blowing bubbles up at things and sucking them back up. They're able to tell what's in front of them. This is the only indication of any animal that can smell underwater. They also eat faster than every mammal in the world. It seems that this strange looking creature holds a lot of mysteries. Number 1. Sparkle Muffin and Skeletorus Peacock Spiders A few years ago, Madeleine Girard, a grad student at UC Berkeley, discovered a couple new species of peacock spiders in Queensland, Australia. Although their official titles are Maritus jacatus, she named one of them Sparkle Muffin, based on its beautiful coloration or blue and red stripes along its belly and the other, Skeletorus, based on the white marks against its black body. Peacock spiders are known for their bright and lively colour schemes, but these new discoveries knock the ones we already knew out of the water. While Sparkle Muffin looks a lot like formerly discovered peacock spiders, with the dial raised to 11, Skeletorus is distinctive, making researchers think that these spiders are a diverse group. However, peacock spiders have distinctive features aside from their looks alone. For one thing, they're jumping spiders, which means they don't spin webs to capture prey, but rather hunt them. But most notably, they engage in strange mating rituals involving a complicated dance. When trying to mate, male peacock spiders show a part of their body called the fan, which is a flap that has intricate designs and stripes on it. In addition to this, they'll raise one of their legs and show the female, and all of this happens super fast. When one researcher, Jurgen Otto, saw a Skeletorus mating dance, he was astounded at the energy that this spider displayed, flexing and dancing to its heart's content. Number 18. Ai Ai Lemur If there's one thing for which Madagascar is famous, it must be lemurs. It's the only place on Earth where you'll find these primates living in the wild. And perhaps one of the scariest looking critters is the Ai Ai. If you don't know its name, you'll certainly remember its distinctive face. Natives believe that if you come across this animal, it means that someone soon is going to die, and it's a bad omen. I mean, the poor thing does look a little demonic, but its appearance often leads to it getting killed. It has a long, thin, alien-like middle finger and teeth that grow forever like a rodent. It uses its middle finger to tap on trees to find grubs and then pull them out. The I.I. has been hunted for many years and is now on the endangered species list. Due to their appearance and ancient beliefs, they are feared. However, they are harmless. Fun fact, they're the only primates believed to use echolocation. Number 17. Ghost Snake Researchers found a new species of cat-eyed snake on a path inside the isolated Ancorona National Park of Madagascar, and due to the critter's pale grey coloration, it was named the ghost snake. Cat-eyed snakes have vertical pupils and are more commonly found in developed areas. Experts say they've never seen a cat-eyed snake with such unusual coloration or distinct patterns. While the pale coloration would seem to make it a target, scientists think it might help the reptile to escape predators. Analysis has confirmed the ghost snake is a distinct species, but more research is pending. So far, it's the only one of its kind found. Number 16. Traveller's Palm This is one of Madagascar's most famous species of endemic plants, and it's difficult to overlook because it grows some 23 feet high. Distinguished by huge, paddle-shaped leaves and a fan-like arrangement, its large white flowers produce blue seeds when pollinated. The common name has a couple of explanations. The plant's stems allegedly hold rainwater, which can be used as an emergency reservoir for weary travellers. Another explanation is that the plant serves as a primitive compass, because the plant's fan shape is aligned with an east-west direction. FYI, we're told that the water inside the plant should never be consumed without first being purified. Number 15. Black and White Ruffed Lemur this next fluffy animal is probably familiar from the Madagascar movies, but of course there's more to the lemur than just dancing around the rainforest making jokes. In some ways they're quite mysterious, in that not much is known about how they're distributed across their habitats. You can find them in Madagascar's eastern rainforest, as well as on an island with a really cool name, Nosy Mingabe. 
The black and white ruffled variety is also one large lemur. It can weigh up to 9 pounds and is among the biggest of its species. But one of the best things about this not so little lemur is the way it helps its environment by spreading pollen. When they feed, pollen is attached to those ruffs on their faces. When they move on to the next tree, the pollen goes with them. They play a very important role in Madagascar's ecosystem and are considered critically endangered. Number 14. Pygmy Mouse Lemur At a mere 5 inches long and weighing only 2 ounces, these animals are recognised as the world's second smaller species of mouse lemurs. Also known as the Peter's Mouse Lemur, they were discovered by the Western world in Madagascar in 1993. Its minimal size made it difficult to locate for more than a century. They live in groups of around 15 and can jump nimbly from tree to tree. Not much is known about them, but they're severely threatened due to their cuteness. Many people want them as pets and getting captured and losing their limited habitat is severely hurting this animal as well as most of the animals in Madagascar. Number 13. Leaf Nose Snake it almost looks like it should be called a spear-nosed snake due to its odd nasal appendages that sprout from their faces. That's one way to tell the females from the males. The females have nasal protrusions that are more serrated and complex. The male's protrusions are pointier and longer. These snakes like to hang from branches high in the trees where they can ambush prey and their noses play a major role in this. The snake's appendage resembles the leaves or seed pods that some arboreal lizards feed on. As the snakes lay camouflage, they can easily strike before their meal escapes. And now for number 12, but first be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know your favourite animal from Madagascar in the comments below. Number 12. Prehistoric Groundhogs Punk Satorni Phil is known for giving his annual weather prognostication every February 2nd. More than 60 million years ago, his distant ancestor, Vintana, was known for being one of the largest mammals found in its era. Its fossils have been found in Madagascar, although there's still a lot to learn about them. Scientists estimate this animal would have weighed about 20 pounds. Considering that the biggest modern groundhogs weigh in at around 14 pounds, these ancient animals would have cast a much larger shadow. Number 11. Singi National Park This one is neither plant nor animal, but it earns a spot thanks to its unique nature. And this location does contain some unique plant and animal life too. In western Madagascar, you'll find one of the world's largest stone forests. Known as the immense Grand Singi, it's a labyrinth of water-eroded limestone structures that rise some 300 feet and are razor sharp. The area extends for around 230 square miles in the isolated western portion of the country. Experts say the unusual formations are the result of tropical rain eroding the limestone over time and forming those razor sharp pinnacles. Despite the inhospitable appearance, many animals call the isolated region home. Safaka lemurs, identified by their distinct panda-like coloration, can be found here. In addition, you'll find the ring-tailed mongoose, nearly 50 species of reptiles, various plant life, and more than 100 species of birds. Number 10. Giraffe Weevil This critter looks like the result of a Photoshop session but the giraffe weevil is native to Madagascar, and it's easy enough to see the resemblance to its much larger namesake. It was only discovered in 2008 and is still something of a mystery. You might think the insect's long neck is used for foraging food, but it's really used for combat. The necks of males are up to three times longer than females and enable them to aggressively fight for mates. The bright, vibrant red shell not only covers the insect's wings, it also serves to warn off competitors. Number 9. Tomato Frogs This amphibian doesn't possess that bright, vibrant hue just for show. Its bright coloration is a warning for predators to keep their distance. If a predator still isn't convinced, the frog will puff out its body as a warning. And if all that doesn't work, then the frog will secrete a thick toxin that gums up the eyes and mouth of whatever predator catches them. That's usually enough to set the frog free. Did you know that only the females display this vivid coloration? The males usually have a brownish-orange color that's more drab. Number 8. Flat-tailed geckos These reptiles are found in the eastern part of Madagascar, along with nearby islands. Growing to about 13 inches, they're strictly nocturnal animals due to their light-sensitive eyes. Although they can see colors at night, their eyes are about 350 times more sensitive to light than human eyes. During the day, they'll stick to small tree trunks to rest. 
You know if their sleep time is disturbed, scientists say that these geckos will open its mouth wide and scream. Number 7. Hissing Cockroaches You'll find one of the world's largest species of cockroach in Madagascar. Assuming you really want to find them, that is. Growing to about 3 inches at maturity, they're often found inside rotting logs. There are about 20 species of these big hissing roaches, and unlike most of their brethren, these insects are wingless. The hissing noise is created by forcefully expelling air through small openings in their body segments. The sounds can be used for purposes of attracting mates or to signal disturbance. Not surprisingly, their hissing ability has made these insects very popular in the pet trade. Number 6. Panther Chameleon Why does the common name of this reptile refer to a cat? Because when they were first described in the 19th century, the chameleon's spotted pattern was reminiscent of a leopard or panther. These specimens can display unusually vibrant hues, and that's especially true for males when they're courting. Their coloration can also disclose what part of the country they come from. Scientists have noted that specimens from the northwest parts of Madagascar display a coloration that is reddish or pink. So those animals are often nicknamed pink panthers. Many other patterns and colors will occur within and between regions. This species is also known for having an extremely long tongue. There's a club-like structure at the tip which is covered in thick mucus and forms a suction cup. Once the tip has adhered to prey, it is rapidly reeled back into the reptile's mouth where its powerful jaws crush and consume it. Number 5. Avenue of Baobabs The baobab tree has 9 species and 6 of them are native to Madagascar. They're noted for their unusual shape and can reach heights of nearly 100 feet. In the western part of Madagascar, there's a famous display of these trees lining a dirt road. It's known as the Avenue of Baobabs and runs more than 850 feet. Experts say the trees once stood in a dense forest. As the country's population expanded, the forest was cleared for agricultural purposes, but the locals preserved the baobabs for their value as a source of building materials and a food source. The trees bear a large, dry fruit that contains an edible pulp and seeds, and its bark is made of long, tough fibres that are used for making rope. Number 4. Madame Berta's House Lemur Like I mentioned before, the pygmy marmoset is the world's second smallest primate. For those of you who guessed, Madame Berti's mouse lemur, or Berti's lemur for short, is number one. This little guy is less than 100mm long and weighs only 30 grams. Bertie's lemur resides mainly in Karindi Matia National Park, located in western Madagascar. This nocturnal species has very large eyes to help it see at night. It was only recently discovered in 1992, and was only categorised as its own species as recently as the year 2000. Everyone at first confused it with the pygmy lemur. The tiny lemur eats fruit, chameleons and honeydew from larvae. Because of their small stature, Bertie's lemurs are vulnerable to predators, including humans, who are degrading its habitat via the illegal logging industry. Deforestation has severely affected them, and they're listed as endangered, at best. While they are cute, scientists advise people to keep bare skin away from them because they can be fierce. Number 3. Amazing Arachnids Darwin's bark spiders first made news in 2009 when it was discovered they spin the world's largest spider webs. This species of orb weaver spider has since become known for the engineering skills possessed by the tiny females. They can shoot strands of silk in continuous flows that form bridges across the water to catch insects like mayflies. The epic orb webs can measure about 6 feet wide, while spanning some 80 feet over rivers. Researchers say the webs remain stable over such long distances because the spider silk is stronger than steel. The silk has the potential to be one of the world's strongest biological materials and might even be comparable to Kevlar. Number 2. Brookasia micra chameleon Minuscule enough to fit on the tip of a match head, this is the smallest known chameleon. At a mere 1.1 inches, it also places among the smallest vertebrates overall. It was found on a small, remote island located in the Nosihara archipelago off the Madagascar coastline sometime between 2003 and 2007, and was only described in 2012. Number 1. The Fussa Is it a dog? Is it a cat? 
Experts say that even though the fossa has a snout that appears canine and a body that appears feline, they're closely related to mongooses and belong to that family. These nocturnal beasts are one of the few predators that are native to Madagascar. Adult specimens can measure around 19 pounds and grow to about 6.5 feet long. Their tails make them extremely agile and can be nearly as long as their body. When they come out at night, they feed on birds and reptiles but they have an extremely strong appetite for lemurs, which comprise more than half of the fusses' diet. When fusses were portrayed in the movie Madagascar as being feared by lemurs, that description was spot on. Number 15. Mediterranean Jellyfish one factor that enables species to take hold in new areas is climate change. There is no better example of this than what is happening in the Mediterranean Sea. You can deny it all you want, people, but the sea creatures don't lie. The waters in the area are now a few degrees warmer than in the past, and this warmth stays around longer during the year. This has made it the ideal breeding ground for various species of jellyfish that previously would never have ventured into the cool waters. Population numbers have been increasing for a while, but they got a massive boost in 2015 when the Suez Canal was widened. This gave the jellyfish a quick route into the Mediterranean, and their numbers have flourished. The problem with jellyfish is that they're incredibly difficult to get rid of, and with the ability to lay up to 45,000 eggs in a single day, as well as cloning themselves forever and ever, their presence is on the rise. Authorities are trying to stop them from spreading since their large numbers are affecting tourism and hurting local aquatic animals. The chances of actually eliminating the problem are thought to be minimal. If you're going for a swim in the Mediterranean, watch out for the jellyfish. Number 14. Green Iguanas These lizards have more in common with humans than you think. And this is particularly true in South Florida. Iguanas enjoy the nice scenery and swimming pools where they're often found. They've also been known to hit the links at golf courses and are commonly seen around pedestrians on sidewalks. At around 5.5 feet long and weighing 9 pounds, the reptiles have been breeding rapidly in the areas where pet owners dumped them. That includes Miami suburbs and the Keys where packs of them swarm over sea walls and leave behind trails of filth as they roam through parks. Many citizens complain that there's just no escaping these cold-blooded critters which continue multiplying like rabbits. Number 13. Asian Carp Asian carp are a strong lesson about how foreign species can affect an entire ecosystem. Now, many waterways in the United States are suffering from what was initially a well-motivated decision. They were introduced in the southeast to clear vast areas of weeds and parasites in order to breathe new life into the rivers but the surprising and unforeseen consequences have come at a high price. The four main species of Asian carp that cause problems, the big head, black, grass, and silver, are tough, have few predators, and can lay hundreds of thousands of eggs at a time. They're also able to jump small distances out of the water, which lets them cross dams and barriers. It's a pretty talented fish, I have to give it that. This jumping ability, along with flooding, have allowed the species to spread up the Mississippi River and further. In the areas they reach, they eat all the natural food sources which cause the native species to die out. Their large numbers are compromising the water quality, which makes it less safe to drink and kills the delicate native organisms like mussels. Number 12. Giant Hogweed Moving from the animal kingdom, we've listed a couple of invasive plant species that are cause for concern. This one is also known as the giant cow parsnip, and in certain parts of the world, it's considered to be a very invasive plant species. Reaching heights of 20 feet with a stem that can measure 4 inches in diameter, this is definitely one of the scariest stationary plants out there. It's rightly considered a noxious weed due to its phototoxic sap. Upon exposure to sunlight or ultraviolet rays, it causes redness, itching, and blisters on the skin. Burn wounds can require hospitalization, and resultant scarring may not heal for several years. It's native to Central Asia, but was introduced to the UK as an ornamental plant in the 19th century. From there, it has spread across Europe, the US, and Canada. And now for number 11, but first be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know what the scariest invader is for you in the comments below. Number 11. Javan Mongooses 
While this species originates in the South and Southeast Asia, they've been introduced to many regions as a form of pest control. That includes Hawaii and certain parts of the Caribbean where rats threatened the sugarcane industry in the 1800s. While the mongooses were a successful deterrent, they themselves ended up becoming major pests. Wherever they've been introduced, these animals nearly always pose a threat to various forms of native wildlife. In Hawaii, they preyed on birds and endangered sea turtles. In the Caribbean, they threatened green iguanas and wiped out certain lizards. In some areas, these animals have caused the local extinction of snakes. The animals can adapt to a wide variety of habitats and now occur in Europe and Central South America in addition to other locations. They're typically ranked as one of the world's worst invasive species. Number 10. Green Anacondas Specimens of these big reptiles captured in Florida have measured around 9 feet long. Those were probably juveniles because a mature anaconda can measure more than 17 feet and weigh over 150 pounds. That makes them the world's heaviest known snakes, and they're one of the longest as well. Although the reptiles originate in the swamps and marshes of South America, many of them were adopted as pets in other regions. Very often, the animals were released into the wild by their owners after growing too large to keep. Unfortunately, that's a fairly common story when exotic animals are concerned. With these big beasts in the picture, local ecosystems could be shaken up as the serpents surpass gators and bobcats as the region's top predators. Number 9. Murder Hornets That's a scary rebrand for these insects, but you might know them better as Asian giant hornets. They're one of the most feared hornets in the world thanks to their potent venom and aggressive behaviour. With a body that measures nearly 2 inches long, they're about the size of your thumb, so it's no shock to learn that they're the largest hornets known to exist. Originating in East Asia, they're infamous for their excruciating sting, which victims have described as a white, hot, searing pain. In Japan, they're estimated to kill dozens of people annually. In late 2019, the creatures were observed in Washington state. That was the first time they were reported in the US, and it sparked fears that they could become a potentially deadly invasive species throughout North America. Those fears were enhanced when swarms of them attacked a beekeeper on Vancouver Island. So far, scientists haven't figured out how the hornets arrived in the US, although they may have been transported by international cargo. A better estimate of their population could be made during the summer and fall. That's when they're most active and could pose a major threat to native bees in North America. Number 8. Kudzu This fast-growing vine was first introduced to the US in 1876 and is native to Japan. Its intended purpose was to assist in inhibiting soil erosion. But kudzu has been spreading across the US at the rate of around 150,000 acres each year. Experts tell us that the vine can grow up to 12 inches each day. These invasive plants cause ecological and environmental damage when they outcompete native flora by overgrowing them. That blocks the available light and causes the native species to die out. Many sources consider kudzu to be the most invasive and aggressive plants in the world. Number 7. Northern Snakehead Fish this animal is sometimes called fishzilla because it can grow nearly 5 feet long and can weigh over 18 pounds. They originate in China, but they have been introduced to other parts of the world where they've become highly invasive species. That includes the US where they first showed up in 2002. Their voracious appetites led snakeheads to eradicate not only native fish, but also amphibians and crustaceans. Wildlife officials offered local fishermen cash rewards to catch and kill snakeheads. Efforts have been made to electrocute the animals where they're clustered together in the water, but they're tough to get rid of. Experts say these animals can survive several days out of the water and migrate across short distances on land. Number 6. Cane Toads They're big beasts, with Guinness reporting that the largest known specimen measured 14 inches and weighed over 5 pounds. Their voracious appetites endanger many native species, and toxins found in the amphibian's skin often kill any predator that tries to eat them. Cane toads get their name from sugarcane. In the past, farmers introduced the amphibians to protect their crops from local pests. Ironically, the amphibians became a serious pest in their own right. Native to Central and South America, they were exported to many regions of the planet, 
and they've gained a notorious reputation wherever they go. They've proven to be a particular problem in Australia. In 1935, around 102 of them were introduced to subdue the greyback cane beetle. Less than a century later, there were more than 2 billion cane toads in Oz, and they aren't leaving anytime soon. Number 5. Feral Monkeys Rhesus macaque monkeys can weigh about 17 pounds and are identified by their pink faces. While native to Central and Southeast Asia, they're listed as a globally invasive species. Because they are habitat flexible, the animals have been able to establish field populations from Brazil to Puerto Rico. In the US, the animals were thought to have been released or escaped into the wild after zoos or wildlife parks were destroyed by hurricanes. In one documented case from 1938, a colony of resource macaques were released into the wild as part of a tour cruise promotion in Florida. The highly intelligent and aggressive animals can force out many native species, and because they carry transmittable viruses like herpes B, they can pose a danger to humans. Number 4. Asian Tiger Mosquito Mosquitoes are generally viewed as pests, but this one is especially nasty identified by their black and white markings which resemble tiger-like stripes. The insects are native to Southeast Asia rainforests but have spread across the globe to Africa, Europe and the United States. They're adaptable to a variety of habitats and thrive as easily in urban areas as in the tropics. Unlike many other mosquitoes, this species is active during the day and will keep a close proximity with humans. After females lay their eggs near fresh or stagnant water, they'll feed on humans and other animals with rapid bites. By some estimates, they can inflict 50 bites within about 15 minutes. That rapidity allows the insect to quickly fly off after eating and avoid being swatted. Those bites can be potentially dangerous because these mosquitoes carry at least 20 different diseases, including yellow fever. They're typically ranked among the world's 100 worst invasive species. Number 3. Tegu Lizards It's a black and white reptile that can weigh around 30 pounds, measure 4 feet long, and is known to have powerful claws, jaws, and very sharp teeth. It's native to South America, but more than 100 sightings of the critters have been reported in Florida. Wildlife experts think it was first introduced into the ecosystem by a lizard breeder who released his collection of animals into the wild. They've since been breeding throughout the state, where Florida's climate is similar to that of its native habitat. But in 2020, they were also causing an invasive nuisance in the state of Georgia. Since the tegu's population can rapidly increase, they pose a direct threat to native reptiles and amphibians by outcompeting them for space and food. While the lizards aren't typically known to be aggressive, they will defend themselves if they feel threatened. So experts caution people against attempting to capture or kill the animal. Call a professional trapper instead. Number 2. Nile Perch Measuring more than 6 feet and weighing up to 400 pounds, these fish are regarded as one of the planet's most notorious invasive species. They're native to freshwater lakes and rivers in Africa. After being introduced to Lake Victoria in 1950, their population exploded in the 1980s. With such large numbers, these fierce predators cause the extinction or near extinction of several hundred native species. The Nile perch can cause substantial damage due to its appetite for creatures that support their ecosystems, like crustaceans, insects and zooplankton. In Australia, it directly competes with the native barramundi. Number 1. Burmese Pythons This beast ranks as one of Florida's signature invasive species. They first started showing up in the 1980s and their population has ballooned ever since, with many of them now found in the Everglades because irresponsible pet owners would start to get scared of their python and couldn't take care of it and released it into the wild. These serpents have been taking out native animals like raccoons, possums and squirrels with a cold-blooded efficiency worthy of the Terminator. The threat to indigenous wildlife is so severe that the Sunshine State authorised a hunting program to control the numbers of this beast. Even though the program has resulted in a lot of captures, an estimated 100,000 of the animals could still be slithering about in the wild. Number 9. Penitente If you walk up the side of a high altitude glacier, you might catch sight of spiked ice. From afar, it is truly mysterious how this strange array of spiked ice could form. 
but the explanation is pretty simple. These so-called pinotites generally only form alongside glaciers that are well above sea level, like the Andes, because the air is so dry. In this environment, sunlight can transform ice immediately into water vapour without first turning into liquid water. In chemistry, this is called sublimation. What starts as a flat blanket of snow becomes dented in various spots because of the sublimation process. This only increases as the spots become further dented, heightening the disparity from mound to mound of snow, eventually forming large spikes. Because they occur at such high altitudes, these are hard to see in the flesh. If you're interested, there is a field of them in the Atacama Desert as well. Number 8. Mauraki Boulders If you're ever travelling to New Zealand, be sure to check out one of the most unique natural phenomena in the world. The Mauraki Boulders are big rocks that wash up around Mauraki's Kokohi Beach in New Zealand. But their size obviously isn't the dominant factor. These rocks are almost perfectly spherical and can weigh several tonnes at a time. Because of this, New Zealand's government protects this beach as a natural reserve. These boulders weren't born yesterday. In fact, scientists think that they came into being around 60 million years ago. They're a geological display that are visible because of the erosion from the ocean activity on the shoreline. There are apparently still more boulders in the mudstone waiting to be revealed through erosion. Ancient Māori legend maintains that these boulders are the remnants of a ship, the Arai Te Uru that washed ashore after a wreck. The other features of the shore represent different aspects of the same legend. Have you ever seen the Moraki boulders before? Let me know down below, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already joined us. Number 7. Giant Permafrost Explosions Over the past few decades, scientists have started seeing something shocking. Dozens of large craters in the Siberian permafrost showing up as seemingly out of the blue. Permafrost is a soil that remains frozen at all times of the year in really cold places, just like Siberia. Some of these craters are quite large. For instance, one permafrost explosion in the Taimya Peninsula is around 230 feet wide. Shockingly, some are saying that these craters are actually the result of big explosions. Residents from nearby villages have been reported saying that they heard an explosion-like sound, and another even claimed to see a light flash across the sky. But is this true? The culprit likely isn't some ice bandit, but rather the changing climate. Because of increasing Arctic temperatures, the permafrost is thawing, along with methane frozen inside it. When the permafrost thaws, it releases the stored methane gas, eventually becoming so pressurised beneath the ground that it causes an explosion. There are other theories, but this one seems the most likely. How wild is it that the ground can just randomly explode because of frozen gas? I definitely would not want to be around when that kind of thing happens. Number 6. Sailing Stones In California's Death Valley National Park, there are a number of heavy stones that seem to move across Racetrack Player, a rock bed of the lake that's gone dry, of their own accord. People think this because the rocks leave trails in the mud that seems to show you what direction they've been heading. What would you do if you turned around and saw a stone moving in your direction? You might think that a ghost was out there trying to get you. Of course, this seems outlandish, but it's a reality in Death Valley. This has caused quite a stir of conspiracy theories. Some blame it on aliens, others on esoteric magnetic fields, and the list could go on. To add to the intrigue, no one has actually observed the rocks in motion, but in 2006, NASA scientist Ralph Lorenz figured it out. It would be more accurate to say that the rocks are floating across the mud at the bottom of the lake bed. Here's Lorenz's example. Freeze a rock in a sheet of ice, then place that sheet on top of a water tray with sand on its base. In order to get the rock to move, all you need to do is blow, and the rock leaves a trail in the sand, just like the stones in Racetrack Player. So even gentle breezes could be capable of moving the rocks along the sand, provided that the conditions were wintry enough to generate a bunch of ice and water. People who like the conspiracy seem to resist this explanation, but I guess you just can't convince everyone. Number 5. Lenticular Clouds when you catch a sight of a so-called lenticular cloud, you'd be hard-pressed to see anything else other than a UFO spinning in the sky. But you probably won't be able to see the lenticular clouds in any old place. In fact, they tend to pop up near mountains and mountain ranges. When you look at the clouds passing by, you usually see a dog or a plane, among other things. 
So next time you visit a national park, be on the lookout for the clouds from out of this world. How are lenticular clouds formed? There's a fascinating story to tell. Air is constantly moving around the Earth, and along the way they run into big obstacles such as mountains. This creates areas with a lot more air activity called eddies. Air filled with water flows around mountains, so when it encounters these eddies, it results in a bunch of oscillating waves of moist air. If the temperature of the air at the top of the wave is enough to be dewy, called the dew point, it will condense, otherwise it will evaporate. And it's this series of waves that create the wave cloud. These clouds are pretty foreign to those who don't live near the mountains, which might be why many people have claimed to see UFOs around mountains, but they're actually just another one of nature's wonders. Have you ever seen these lenticular clouds before in real life? Let me know down below. Number 4. Volcanic Lightning Did you know that when a volcano is erupting, it can also shoot out large bursts of lightning, leading to a magnificent but terrifying light show? It may seem like we're just adding insult to injury, but humans have been recording instances of volcanic lightning for years. Volcanoes are threatening enough on their own. If one erupts, then a fiery hot magma puts the entire area surrounding it in serious danger. But lightning would only intensify their danger. When some volcanoes erupt, they eject a large column of ash called an eruption column or a volcanic plume. The volcanoes that emit eruption columns are the ones that also display volcanic lightning. The ashy particles in the eruption column are extremely dense compared to the atmosphere above the volcano. So when they're ejected, the erupted particles scrape against each other, and through this friction, the ash becomes charged with electricity. When this happens on a big enough scale, some pieces of ash will become positively charged, others negatively. These repel one another until they reach a breaking point, and then you get a big bolt of lightning that connects the two set of particles. Volcanic lightning is a sight to behold, but they show that something deadly is occurring, so it's probably just best to watch it on a video. Number 3. Blood Falls Located in Antarctica, Blood Falls is a five-story waterfall that looks like it flows with blood at first glance. This might look exceedingly gruesome, but there is no need to worry. In fact, it's just blood-red water. When it was initially found, scientists thought it was red because of algae, but the story is actually far more interesting than that hypothesis would have you believe. There is a two million year old lake which is home to an ancient group of microbes that is sealed underneath the Taylor Glacier. Because they're under a large thicket of ice, they've been preserved this entire time. They've been untouched by the outside world, and because of this, the trapped river has retained its salt and iron content, which is what tints the water red, just like blood. The glacier has a thick fissure, which ekes out the ancient body of water little by little, while also guarding the ancient microbial community inside. Of course, some have said that this could mean there are ancient bits of life locked below the surfaces of extraterrestrial bodies, like Mars. There is very little evidence that suggests this is the case, but it makes for an interesting thought. Who knows where life can thrive? Number 2. Black Sun At many times in the year in Denmark, you can see one of the most magnificent sights the natural world has to offer. Hundreds of thousands of starlings flying together in an immense flock formation and dancing across the skies. One can spot it in multiple places across southwestern Jutland but the flocks are largest around Tonda and Ribe, where the number of birds can occasionally reach close to 1 million. The event occurs at sunset and tends to last around 20 minutes, and the Danish call it Sort Sol, meaning black sun, because the amount of birds in the sky makes it seem like the sun has gone black. Why does this event occur though? It happens when the starlings come back from the north during migration, on the way back, they stop at Denmark's Wadden Sea National Park to take a break from their long trip. And while they search for a place to rest, they dance together in the sky. While sometimes the flock can be about a million starlings large, they tend to break up at around a half million birds because there are too many chaotic disturbances in the flock. Some predators have even tried to invade the flock during Sort Sol, but the sheer numbers of starlings are able to drown them out. Have you ever been able to see Sort Soul in person? Please let me know in the comments below. Number 1. Fire Whirl The Fire Whirl is a whirlwind that forms in the middle of big wildfires. 
They're typically composed of ash and or fire. Tornadoes are beasts of nature. Most often, tornadoes form in the midst of thunderstorms when the sun heats the ground faster than the clouds. Once the heat rises, they form tornadoes. But while these intense columns of supercharged air are dangerous, they can't hold a candle to the fire well. Since the fire tornadoes don't go all the way from the ground to the clouds, they're not properly considered tornadoes, but they do come about in a similar way. When flames start to heat up and stir with winds close to the ground, you've got yourself a recipe for a fire whirl, and they can be deadly. The worst of them can reach up to 400 feet into the air, grow up to 50 feet wide, and send gusts of wind up to 300 miles per hour, all while maintaining a heat of up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, I agree. You might not want to go storm chasing with these bad boys. Firewheels also start horizontally, giving them a wider range of attack. As it gets hotter and quicker, it may break away and change orientation quickly. This means that firewheels are capable of inflicting a whole lot of damage in a short amount of time. Not only do they have the skies covered, but the horizons as well. For these reasons, firewheels are even more dangerous than your run-of-the-mill tornadoes. Thanks again for watching. What's the weirdest natural event that you've ever seen in person? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell to stay updated on all of the newest videos. Number 20. Myanmar Mashup A truly bizarre discovery was made at one of the richest deposits of Cretaceous Amber in Myanmar. It's considered to be an extinct wingless wasp found inside amber that dates 100 million years old. The characteristics of several different insects are exhibited by this animal. The strong hind legs are reminiscent of a grasshopper. They would have been useful for jumping or pulling itself out of crevasses into which it had burrowed. The insect also displays the thick abdomen of a cockroach and ant-like antennae. Its face possessed a jagged stinger, not unlike a wasp and likely used it to attack rival insects. Because the animal is so unique, researchers created an entirely new family for it that includes bees and wasps. Number 19. Giant snails. In terms of giant-sized gastropods, the largest species today is the African land snail. They can grow more than 7 inches long, with a shell diameter of about 3.5 inches. If that's not big enough for you, consider this prehistoric specimen. It lived some 50 million years ago during the Eocene Epoch. The appropriately named C. giganteum was a marine gastropod that could grow some 2 feet long. Lengthwise, it's considered to be one of the biggest species of shelled gastropods that ever lived. Imagine a snail that big in your garden. Its fossil was discovered in France, mainly in the Paris Basin. Number 18. Ticks. Ticks are another species that we're all too familiar with today, but also bugged the dinosaurs tens of millions of years ago. A collector in Burma found a lump of amber in 2017 that contained one that appears to be entangled with a feather, and it's teaching scientists about how they lived. The exact species of the animal that the feather came from isn't yet known for certain. Either way, it would have been a great meal for the tick. Another lump of amber had an identical type of parasite in it, but this one had only just finished a meal before it was caught in tree sap. This one was eight times its original size, which means it was probably engorged with the blood of its victim. The finds were some of the first that proved parasitic insects plagued the animals of the Cretaceous period, and if how they behave today is anything to go by, they would almost certainly have fed on all feathered animals of the time especially dinosaurs. And now for 17, but first be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up before you leave. Number 17. Euphorbaria. If you're squeamish about millipedes or centipedes, you can give thanks this creature is extinct. It was similar to today's anthropods, with a big difference. Certain members of its genus could measure over 3 feet long. Modern day centipedes are known to prey on animals as large as bats. What do you think these prehistoric monsters ate for dinner? Number 16. Platyceramus. While this list has a lot of insects and other creepy crawlies,
this creature is a bit different, and if you like seafood, it might make you more hungry than scared. Yet this humongous prehistoric bivalve was too big to ignore. Platyceramus was one of the largest clams ever discovered. Some of them were nearly 10 feet long, which dwarfs the largest modern clams. The giant clam can grow more than 4.5 feet, with exceptionally large specimens weighing 750 pounds. We couldn't find estimates for the prehistoric clam's weight, but given its size, it must have been a truly massive mollusk. Number 15. Camaraceras. Its upper body size can only be estimated, yet this is still regarded as one of the largest cephalopods that ever existed some 470 million years ago. And some sources claim it's the largest one of all. Researchers say the animal may have reached 30 feet based on its shell remnants. It had tentacles growing from its cone-like shell that were used for seizing prey. A hard beak at the base of its tentacles would have cracked open the prey's shell or exoskeleton. They're related to modern squids, cuttlefish, and octopuses. Number 14. Meganura. They're related to present-day dragonflies and would have resembled them as well. Existing some 300 million years ago, Meganura is a genus that contains species with some frightening dimensions. Some of them were the size of birds, with wingspans exceeding 28 inches. It boggles the mind to imagine a dragonfly large enough to prey on animals like frogs or squirrels. But their diet consisted mainly of other insects. Fossils of these creatures have been found in France and England. And even though they were scary big, they weren't the biggest known flying insects. That one is coming up a little later. Number 13. Pulmonoscorpius. Many scorpions are considered to be small, deadly, and carry a fearsome reputation. But this prehistoric monster measured about 30 inches long and would have looked like a real nightmare. They lived around 345 million years ago, and their sting may have been powerful enough to take down smaller mammals or reptiles. Number 12. Fleas. If you've ever been around fleas, you'll know how annoying they can be but imagine them being 10 times the size with an equally as big bite and thirst for blood. And that's what dinosaurs had to face on a daily basis. Researchers who discovered these prehistoric monsters described their bite as being like a hypodermic needle going into the skin because of their super-sized proboscis they used to feed. They were found as fossils in Inner Mongolia, and while looking very much like a soft-bodied flea, are thought to be the ancestors of a long extinct flea lineage. As well as having a vicious straw to drink blood through, they also had long claws that they could use to hold on tightly to the scales of their prey to ensure they could finish their meal before being shaken off. Number 11. The trouble with trilobites. These are marine anthropods that have scavenged in the oceans for hundreds of millions of years. By most accounts, they were among the most successful forms of early animal life. On average, they could reach about 4 inches. But the largest known species is identified as Irex. That animal reached 28 inches long and 16 inches wide. With its armoured shell, compound eyes, and segmented body, it might have resembled today's horseshoe crab, even though they're not closely related. The closest living relatives to trilobites are animals like sea spiders which is scary enough on their own. Number 10. Pam de Lurion. Some of the scariest animal jaws in history may have belonged to this prehistoric creature. Paleontologists say its fossils have been found in China and date back some 520 million years. They belong to a class of worm-like creatures distinguished by their mouths filled with circlets of plates and choppers. Some have compared it to the Sarlacc beast from Star Wars but this critter would have been a real-life nightmare. Its head was lined with large spikes, behind which was its mouth. The mouth had three layers of teeth and plates that protruded out in a pyramid-like shape. Prey was speared by the animal's spikes while the mouth sprang open to feed. At around three feet long, it wasn't nearly as big as the Sarlacc, but sometimes smaller is scarier. Number 9. The Platypus of Crabs Scientists discovered a new species of crab in 2019 that was unlike anything they'd ever seen. 
dating back some 95 million years, the prehistoric animal had a shrimp-like mouth, the eyes of a larva, claws like a crab, and a lobster's carapace. Its bizarre anatomical mashup earned it the nickname the platypus of crabs. Due to its unusual legs, scientists think it was probably a water dweller and spent more time swimming than crawling on the ground. Another major departure from normal crab features was this animal's size. Many of them were no bigger than a US quarter. Number 8. Scorpion Spiders Around 100 million years ago, an arachnid existed that could nearly pass as a spider and scorpion hybrid. Paleobiologists found the creature's remains preserved in Burmese amber in Myanmar. The specimen had a body length of 2.5mm, while its tail measured about 3mm. But this small critter presented some big questions for experts. Their whip-like tails are similar to those of the present-day whip scorpion, which are not true scorpions either. But these ancient mysterious arachnids did possess several traits typical of true spiders, including spinnerets to create silk. So these newly unearthed animals could be an example of a Lazarus taxon with no fossil record. Or they might have belonged to an extinct group that shared some similar origins as spiders. In any case, the arachnids could prove that spider-like creatures with tails existed alongside true spiders some 200 million years ago. Number 7. Giant Shrimp Its official name is Anomalocaris, but it's likely better known as the giant abnormal shrimp. It lived more than 500 million years ago and was first described in 1892. Back in its day, there were evidently a lot of these critters swimming in the world's oceans. That's because their fossils have been found widely distributed all about the globe. It's thought to have been a ferocious predator, mainly feeding on trilobites or extinct marine anthropods. A Nomalocurus would have made for a truly giant shrimp. Number 6. Hallucigenia This animal is known from fossils found in China and Canada. Its odd name is a reference to its hallucinatory appearance. They were tubular creatures about 1.4 inches long, with up to 8 pairs of legs that each had a pair of claws. Another 3 sets of pincers were located behind their legs. They had no sensory organs like eyes or ears, and while they were most often considered to be a type of worm, some experts think they're more like anthropods. Number 5. Meganeuropsis these enormous specimens existed more than 315 million years ago, and while they resemble dragonflies, they're only distant relatives. Researchers typically refer to them as griffinflies, or large, primitive, predatory insects. This genus contains the largest known flying insect ever, beating out the previously mentioned Meganeura. The enormous Meganeuropsis permiana was a species with a wingspan of nearly 30 inches across and body length of about 19 inches. That's far greater than today's largest dragonfly, which has a wingspan of 7.5 inches. Along with their great size, these creatures had powerful toothed jaws and would have been highly maneuverable in the air. Number 4. Manipulator while we might assume a prehistoric cockroach was a huge version of today's insect, such is not the case here. But even though the manipulator M was a mere 4.5mm long, it would still give you a scare. It had a freely rotating head, an elongated neck, and unusually long legs that were used for chasing prey or ambushing it. Experts say it probably hunted at night as it skittered around nearly 100 million years ago. Even though it's identified as a cockroach, its closest living relative today is the praying mantis. Number 3. Arthropleura Today's largest species of millipede grows more than 15 inches long. The largest centipede grows more than 12 inches long. No doubt many of us think they're scary enough to begin with. But can you imagine either of those animals measuring several feet long? That's horror movie stuff. Arthropleura was an ancestor of both these invertebrates, and experts say the largest of them could grow 8 feet long or more. It could also measure several feet wide, so its size alone was enough to discourage predators. But despite its massive size, fossilised evidence has revealed it can move quickly to swerve, avoiding rocks and trees on the forest floor. Even though it appeared fearsome enough to be a predator itself, the creature was actually herbivorous. Researchers say it's the largest species of land invertebrate known to date. 
Number 2. Monster Sea Scorpions One might quibble that J. Coleopterus wasn't really a sea scorpion because it probably lived in freshwater environments. But there's no arguing about how frightening this beast would have been. Alive some 390 million years ago, J. Renaini measured some 8.5 feet and is the largest anthropod yet to be discovered. That is double the height of some people. It possessed heavy, robust pincers more than 18 inches long and was probably an apex predator. Even though they're the largest anthropods, these animals had a lightweight build, so they weren't necessarily the heaviest of the lot, but they were extremely agile and highly maneuverable. Number 1. Mosquitoes Mosquitoes are one of the largest causes of human fatalities throughout the world because of the diseases that they carry, with some estimates suggesting as many as 400,000 people die each year because of malaria alone. Their annoyance isn't just a human issue, and a discovery announced in early 2019 suggests that their impact hasn't changed much in 100 million years, even if the species have. They have been equally annoying to all species with blood for millions of years. Found in amber in Myanmar, researchers have identified a new type of anopheline, which is the family of mosquitoes that carry malaria. At the time it was caught in tree sap, it would have been living in a tropical forest surrounded by velociraptors and T. rexes, and would have fed on birds, small mammals, and reptiles of all sizes. They definitely would have been bothering the dinosaurs in the same way they do us, and researchers are now looking at whether they could have been vectors for disease spreading. Some believe the true reason for the extinction of the dinosaurs was a plague or an illness, and it's quite possible that mosquitoes were the ones responsible for spreading it. Number 8. Prince the Irish Terrier We know that all dogs are good boys, but Prince the Irish Terrier was such a good boy that he followed his owner into war. This is probably the oldest cast of a dog reuniting with its owner on this list. Prince lived a peaceful life in Buttevant, Ireland, with his owner James Brown and his wife. But when James went off to World War I in September 1914, Prince was devastated, and after James left, his wife and Prince moved to Hammersmith district of London. However, around November, she was shocked to find that Prince was nowhere in sight. Experiencing intense dismay, she wrote to her husband on the front lines about Prince's disappearance. But, amazingly, Brown wasn't phased by his wife's letter, because by the time it had arrived, Prince had already found Private Brown deep in the trenches of Armentier. He was keeping Brown and his battalion in good company. How exactly they found one another among the chaos remains something of a mystery. Some say that Brown spotted a pup that looked like Prince, but when he got closer, he saw that it was his actual dog. Others say that different members of his battalion saw Prince and notified Private Brown immediately. But regardless of what happened, Prince would have had to swim the English Channel to find his owner. We can't be sure of every detail in the story due to lax reporting standards at the time, but if entirely true, it represents a remarkable connection between man and animal. And now for number 7, but first be sure to share your best pet stories in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell for more stories like these. Number 7, Willow the Cat. Willow the cat returned home five years after escaping. But that's not the most extraordinary thing about Willow's journey back home. The craziest thing is where she was found. Although Willow the cat comes from Colorado, they discovered her walking around the busy streets of Manhattan. That's over a thousand miles away from home. Willow must have had a wild ride across the country. Willow lived in Boulder, Colorado with her parents Jamie and Chris Squires and their three children when a few workers left their house's door open and Willow escaped. While they tried to look around for Willow, they were in dismay hoping that she would come back herself. But after five long years of waiting, they just assumed that Willow must have been gone for good. Maybe she'd made a life for herself as a tiny mountain lion in the Rockies of Colorado. Who knows? But then, out of nowhere, Jamie and Chris got a call that Willow had been recovered in the fairway of New York City. How could Willow have travelled as far as the Big Apple? 
No one really knows for sure, but veterinarians were able to analyse her microchip and definitely confirm that it was indeed Willow. Willow and her family went on a victory tour to NYC to interview with The Today Show. Even Michael Bloomberg chimed in, saying that Willow must have wanted to use one of her nine lives up in New York City. Number 6. Opie the Horse Opie the Horse was returned to its rightful owner after 10 long years of waiting. Opie's story has tons of twists and turns, so let me get right into it. Opie was Michelle Poole's horse. When she needed back surgery, she got her dad to watch Opie instead of paying pricey fees for boarding. Her father kept Opie behind a wire fence, but then somebody came and cut the fence open, stealing Opie away from its family. A horse like Opie would likely go for $15,000 on the market. Even though Michelle immediately filed a report, there was no news for 10 years. However, eventually she got the call. They had found Opie under mysterious circumstances. They discovered Opie over 200 miles away from his home. He was initially found by a pastor who claimed to have found Opie just walking along the road. And luckily, he just so happened to have a trailer in which to store him. Did this pastor then try to return Opie? Nope. Instead, he put an ad up on Craigslist to sell the horse. But then one woman recognised Opie's picture from the list of lost horses and contacted local authorities. Thankfully, Michelle got Opie back after all that time. Law enforcement investigated the pastor's home for evidence of thievery, but found nothing. However, the pastor's story is without a doubt curious, and it seems like something fishy must have been going on. Number 5. Sophie Tucker the Cattle Dog Sophie Tucker is an Australian cattle dog that survived alone on an island for five months, only to be reunited with her owners. This just proves how resilient animals can be in the face of adversity. When Jane and Dave Griffith were sailing with their cattle dog Sophie Tucker off the shores of Queensland, Australia, they ran into some serious weather. While trying to keep the boat upright, they were horrified to see that Sophie Tucker had gone overboard. While Jane and Dave thought all was lost, Sophie Tucker was busy proving that she was one of the toughest dogs in the world. Once she went overboard, she swam around 5 kilometers in harsh weather to the nearby deserted St. Bees Island, where she fended for herself for 5 months. There are tons of wild goats on St. Bees Island, and Sophie Tucker was able to hunt them for the few months that she was away. After hearing news of a dog hunting goats on St. Bees, rangers came to the island, captured Sophie Tucker, and returned her to her family. Jane and Dave were stunned. Sophie Tucker had been an indoor dog her entire life, but was able to live all on her own. But cattle dogs are indeed quite strong, and Sophie Tucker was no weakling. Do you think your dog has what it takes to make it in the wild? Let me know below. Number 4. Manuela the Tortoise Manuela the tortoise survived inside a box for over 30 years. In a suburban home in Rio de Janeiro around 1982, the Almeida family couldn't locate their pet tortoise Manuela and assumed that some builders at their house doing renovations had simply left the door open for Manuela to walk through. But then, over 30 years later, when Leandro Almeida was clearing storage space, he came to a shocking discovery. Manuela somehow was alive and had been locked away the entire time. Talking to Globo, he said, I put the box on the pavement for the rubbish men to collect. And a neighbour said, You're not throwing out the turtle as well, are you? I looked and saw her. At that moment, I turned white. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. To be honest, I can't either. How could something like this have ever happened? Experts say that Manuela likely survived by eating up tiny insects like termites and flies and drank condensation to stay hydrated. Many turtles have been reported as surviving without food for around two to three years, but that's nothing on Manuela's timestamp of 30 years. So if you ever happen to have had a tortoise go missing, be careful when you're throwing out old boxes because you might just find that your old pet is more resilient than you could have ever imagined. Number 3. Nigel the Parrot For years, Nigel the Parrot lived with Darren Chick, a Brit. In fact, after living with him for so long, Nigel even developed a British accent when he talked. But this African grey parrot flew away from his home in Southern California in 2010, and for four years Darren thought that all hope was lost. But when someone found Nigel four years after his departure, veterinarians were able to return Nigel back to Darren. But surprisingly, 
Nigel now spoke a different accent. What happened on Nigel's voyage? As it turns out, Nigel had been living with another family, the Smiths, for that entire time. They bought him from a yard sale after he'd gone missing, and Nigel spent most of his time with Ruben Hernandez, a member of the Smith family and recent widower, who renamed Nigel to Morgan. Over the years that Nigel spent with Reuben, he developed his new accent. So when Nigel returned back home to Darren after years of being gone, he knew something was up based on the bird's new accent. Of course, this is an incredible story, so it was on primetime news where Reuben's granddaughter was watching. She reached out to Darren and explained to him what had happened while Nigel was away. This nearly brought a tear to Darren's eyes and he returned Nigel back to the Smiths, recognising that his home was now with them. A touching end to an amazing story. Number 2. Giggle Blizzard the Cat When any cat runs away, their owners are naturally devastated and hope to find them soon. Giggle Blizzard was gone for 11 days after escaping during a play date. Her owner Tracy Steger must have been worried. Giggle Blizzard might be the best name of any pet on this list. Honestly, I'm thinking it might just be the best name for anything in general. But Giggle Blizzard has a story that's far more charged than this light-hearted name would suggest. Tracy put out calls for Giggle Blizzard on Craigslist, but to no avail. But, incredibly, Giggle Blizzard returned on the evening of Thanksgiving. While trying to enjoy the holiday with friends and family, she heard some distinctive meowing from outside, and when she looked, she was amazed to discover that Giggle Blizzard had returned home, however, with some substantial battle scars. In fact, Giggle Blizzard had to pull himself indoors. Sadly, both of her cat's hind legs were broken. They had been crushed by a car. This means that Giggle Blizzard must have had rough travels on her way back home, but she made it nonetheless. I think that definitely counts as one of her nine lives. And thankfully, a local veterinarian was able to perform some amazing surgery, and Giggle Blizzard is now back in business. Take a look at these pictures of Tracy's cat in recovery. Pretty incredible that Giggle Blizzard was able to make it back home safe, even if there were some huge physical challenges along the way. Number 1. Reckless the dog. Even though they thought he was long gone, Reckless the dog had made it through a big storm and was reunited with his family after a year and a half. How does something like this happen? Well, in 2012, Hurricane Sandy ravaged the New Jersey coastline, leaving immense wreckage in its wake. Sadly, Chuck and Alicia James experienced the brunt of Sandy's trajectory and their house experienced significant damage. It also broke their fence, and their terrier pit bull mix, Reckless, went running. Chuck and Alicia were devastated, and they wanted more than anything to find Reckless. But after a year and a half, all of their prospects seemed hopeless. So when their daughter turned 10 years old, they decided it was about time to find another pup for her. So they went to their local Monmouth County SPCA. When they went there, however, they met a dog named Lucas who looked an awful lot like Reckless. When Lucas saw the couple, he started jumping in the air. That's when they knew that this was Reckless after all. And they confirmed the fact based on a distinctive scar on his head. So, even after all this time and through one of the worst storms on record, Reckless was able to reunite with his family. I would say that's a much better birthday present. Not a new dog, but not having to say goodbye to an old one. Thanks again for watching. Do you have any stories of pets finding their way back home? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, don't forget to like this video and click that notification bell to stay up to date on all our coolest new videos. See you next time.